To be honest, Tom Walsh opening up at 75 feet, I wasn't shocked by that because in, in that moment, I did not think I walked me. Having that clear mindset and the confidence. Why would you not be able to do that? Watching him struggle, it's terrible. I got beat by the guy I was supposed to be helping. I lost a lot of the passion I had for throwing. That's the reality too. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more than just throwing to win in Doha. We'll just get to round six. <laughs> Obviously, Walsh opens with a huge throw. I mean, 2090 opener. I think in a lot of competitions, right, most people could have, could really easily mentally shut down. Like, shit, this is, this is done. 75 foot, third best throw until the third best throw happened in round six. You, you get to that point, and obviously, even to him to a certain extent, I would have to think mentally he just thinks he's got it. So then you kind of build, you get to two, two throws, what, 20, 2194, 2195. You're, you're just kind of building up throughout the whole competition. I mean, this is like literally the, the, the kid dream scenario, right? I got one final throw. I got my last chance to win the whole thing. And clearly you put it together and you go from fourth place, you leapfrog everybody, you go up to, you hit 20. 91 and right. obviously you know even even just repeating it it's like i'm such a huge fan of the sport i think that's one thing people don't get so i mean it was it was just an amazing performance it's everything you would think and and one of the things i always talk about it's like the mindset of an athlete to be in that situation the amount of pressure that's on and to be able to come up and hit that throw you can appreciate it if you're not a coach but if you are a coach i think it just makes you appreciate that performance on a whole nother level yeah it's just it, it's almost hard to describe. It's crazy now, but like 22 meters nowadays is like, it's not like you had to go 20, 22, 30, you know? And it was like, you have to hit not just a PR. I mean, you got to hit a damn near a half meter PR and you did. And so at that point, when you're there, you know, what was, what was going through your mind going into that throw? That was sure. a little wordy of a setup, but. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'll, I'll quick recap the beginning was, um, I had some good good ring warm-ups. I wouldn't say that I was throwing very far. I threw pretty far over 22, but it wasn't like I was blowing out of the ring. I felt pretty confident. My first throw, to be honest, I tightened up a little bit. And then from there on out, I went over to Ashley every throw, and we just went in with a plan. The real plan was my training that week. I was really, to be honest, I was in PR shape. I was seeing really good technique, really good balance. So the big theme that her and I had together was get a lifetime best, get a PR. To be honest, Tom Walsh opening up at 75 feet, I wasn't shocked by that because he does normally open up pretty big. We had a day between the qualifying and the, the final, which is unusual. And just the way the season's gone, you know, when that happened, I was ready for that. You know, the big thing that Ashley and I talked about was we had a lot of horse analogies this year about like finding your carrot, which is your incentive and kind of putting on the blinders just like the horses do. That's cool. Tom did that. Like I respect him for throwing 75 feet. It's amazing. But I, I'm not going to get caught up in that. And I think that's the biggest thing that I'm going to, I'll stress about this year more than anything. Like the 2015 world champion me or the silver medalist in the Olympics or silver in 17 would not have stood a chance in that competition. And I'll, I'll tell you that because I would have gotten so caught up with the head-to-head -head battle fighting with emotion rather than walking over to my wife and saying, okay, hey, I, I rushed a little bit. And her giving me a technical cue or her just going back to the basics. Everything we worked on in practice, it was literally like I was just trying to execute for me. So going into the, the finals, I started to add a little bit more, a little bit more speed, a little bit more gusto. I kind of had a little pace around and she said that she wanted me to go down swinging she just wanted me to throw the ball far at this point i had no fouls which i for most of my career i've known as a guy who fouls all the time so i, I had no fouls in, in the meet so she said make the ball go far you know i don't care if you fouls like start opening it up that kind of changed my mindset like okay let's go so by the time we got to the sixth right after the fifth round going to the sixth i walked over to her and she's just like looked at me and said come away with a pr you're ready for it truly i felt like it was every throw felt like i was building and i was checking off the boxes of everything we worked in practice. It, it was it was very like she calls me a checklist guy because when I got my pilot's license, like I like things just I like things in order. So as soon as I started to feel everything click, I went into that sixth round with the confidence. You did tell me throw it like a light ball, which was a good thing mentally. I think with the aggression. And the same time, I went into that ring and I felt more confidence than I've ever felt in a major meet or any meet, to be honest, because my training was ready. Every throw I took, I had five throws previously that were all kind of like building, building, even though they weren't as far in terms of execution in the ring mm -hmm. i was working on that so by the time i i sprint out of the back i'm facing the throw and i release the ball 
I screamed like crazy out of a reaction because, of course, that's what I do. And in that moment, I did not think I won. Me. Like, I, I wanted to stress that because people think, oh, you think you won. I didn't know if I won. I don't even know if I knew I PR'd. I don't know if I knew I meddled. I knew I executed everything that we were talking about in training. I mean, obviously, a part of me that was just like, I at least got a bronze medal. I at least PR. Because mm-hmm. that was the goal, coming with the PR. Now, of course, when I ran over the stands, I think I yelled at her and I told her I loved her. And uh, But when we turned around after that, and when I saw 91, the first first place next to it yeah I even yelled a little bit louder crazy because it just that moment you know it felt like everything clicked and Ryan and Tom still had to throw after me even Romani too I was clapping for all of them and hoping they were through far which is uh it's a weird place to be in but like with Ryan coming back and throwing 22 90 almost till for the win if he would have bumped me off like I would have had crazy amount of respect for him you know what I mean like that's it's a hell of an accomplishment so I was just happy to be part of that competition and happy like I checked off my boxes because that was our goal. Check off your boxes coming with the PR. It's really hard to tell yourself to stay in that zone <laughs> because that's what everybody says. But that's the first time in my career that I truly, I think I executed that. That's awesome. I, you know, I think one of the things, that, like I said, we're, we're kind of our goal with this podcast is we're going to be talking to more high level athletes and successful coaches is, um, and that's really the crux of the, of the podcast. Not so much about, I'll, I'll probably ask you about your lifting and, you know, your eating and stuff. But the real thing is mindset. Mindset. What you just said is such a, it's one of those things where people sometimes when you talk about mindset, they go, yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. But you know, tell me how much, tell me how to, how much I should be, what should I be doing in the weight room? You know, tell me, should I throw heavy balls? You know, they, they focus on that. And you know, you said if you had being in that same situation in 2017, you know, you may not, you kind of alluded to the fact may not have had the same outcome. You just competed against yourself. You were just executing. Yeah. I mean, I would guarantee it wouldn't be the outcome because I was always competing, competing competing off of the emotion and aggression and it always turned to even if it wasn't a head-to-head battle that's what I was at least thinking in my mind which I obviously had a lot of success doing that so it's not always wrong but in terms of this this meet you know especially with everybody throwing the way they did having that clear mindset and the confidence of of me just worrying about me especially at the age I'm at you know that's really where I kind of am starting to enjoy this more and more because I'm not focused on what Ryan, Tom, Darrell, or Romani are doing. I'm just going to ch- go back to the basics and try to make sure I'm doing what I want to be doing. Very cool. So now, Ashley, as the coach, now you're in that situation. So now talk about sixth round. You tell them to go out there and PR. There's got to be, you You have your master's in human development and you know leadership. So I have to imagine, and like I said, I'll ask you about that, but you're using that. So what's the exterior? You're saying go out, PR. Are, but what's going on? What's your mental dialogue and what's your dialogue to Joe? You know, I think that in one of the things that Joe and I have talked a lot about with the collegiate throwers is just, you know, I think people have this idea in their head, like they have this number, like if I throw this, then that'll look good enough, you know? So you have this, like this, like first layer of like, if I throw this, it's decent. And I'm going to feel like, you know, I didn't embarrass myself. I didn't look stupid, whatever. And then there's like the next layer where like, Ooh, if I threw this, it would look really good. If I threw this and then got this place, it would, you know, so you kind of have this border of like acceptable in your mind, especially like now with everything being so public. And I think that, you know, I think that that doesn't go away, you know, when you get to be at at Joe's level. So I think that, you know, for us, it was like about having a good showing. And like, like I said to Joe, it's, we talked to the college kids about this. It's like, I tell them, you know, if you're in 20 meter shape, be a 20 meter guy when it counts, you know, that's the thing. Like I tell my collegiate guys, like, don't, don't come out to practice and show signs. You could throw 20 meters, then go to the meet and throw 1850 and think we're going to clap our hands about it. Like that doesn't make sense. Like be who you are. Mm -hmm. And so everything that Joe was doing in training, it's like, well, you are in shape to throw a PR. So it's like, like, why would you not be able to do that? You know, it's just kind of like, that's what you do when you're in shape to do that. One of those types of things. So, you know, I was pleased with, you know, obviously the first round was a little bit iffy, but you know, he came back on the second throw and secured the final, whatever. And it was building on every throw, but it got to a point where I said to him, I was just like, Hey, look, they're nice. They're good throws, but they're not helping. It's either going to be, you're going to swing for it. And it's going to be, wow, that went far, but I couldn't hold it in. Or it's going to be a PR. And like, that's the only option. There's no option for anything else other than that. Right. And I'll tell you what, like, 
like I've had a lot of nerves with a lot of the stuff that he's done. Um, USA's was probably, you know, like my resting heart rate was probably like 154. You know, so it was pretty, and I mean literally because I had my Apple Watch on, it was tough. But at Worlds, you know, after he'd thrown 21 high, I was like, you know what? After everything that he's kind of been through in the last year, even if he would have thrown 2190 something and it would have been like, oh man, first time Joe didn't get a medal at a major. But it also would have been like a decent showing to the point that like I would have been like, hey, like that wasn't bad. But I also would have known in the back of my head that he had more than that. So right. that was why like the final was kind of like, hey, like you're in a really cool opportunity where you don't really have pressure. So just like enjoy it. And I think that's the thing that we talked about a lot. It was like, look, last year was a little bit rough. You've gotten yourself to a pretty good place. We think you're in PR shape. Like enjoy where you're at and have fun and see what you can do. And I think that that making it kind of light and it wasn't me like being fake light because I've had to do that mm -hmm. a lot. It was like genuinely like, hey, like why not swing? Why not see what happens? Like kind of like who cares? You, you three foul in the final, like still through 2190 something. So that's, that's cool. It actually wasn't as nerve wracking in the final as some of the other experiences that we've had, but it was cool to see him in a state where he was seemed very collected and mm -hmm. he handled himself like a true veteran. And I think that that was like, obviously really rewarding to be able to see him in that place. That's awesome. Now as his wife, <laughs> what's going through your head as his wife? I think that the, the hardest thing about the whole thing is you don't want to see somebody that you love struggle. As a coach, you don't like to see your athletes struggle because, but it's just different. Like if my athletes are struggling, like part of me will be like, all right, well, what about this, this or that? Or like, how can we figure it out? It's, and it's more business. I just care about my kids, but it's not, it's not the same as, you know, I don't go home with them. Right. You know? So like watching him struggle is <clears throat> Like it's, it's just, it's terrible, you know, because you want to be able to help. It, it's the same as anybody else's spouse. Like if you saw your spouse struggling, it would like really bother you. Now, if they were struggling with something that you thought that you could help them with, then you'd probably have even more like bigger to try to find a way to get it going. I, I really think that it was a lot harder when he was in a bad place than it is when he's in a good place. Because when he's in a good place and he goes out, if it works out, cool. If it doesn't, it's like, we still knew he was in a, in a good place. When he wasn't in a good place, that's when it, that's when it was really tough because I just, I don't like to see him upset you know and so it's like if he would have thrown 2190 something at worlds he would have probably been a little bit like oh man like i could have done better than that but it wouldn't have been like hey i want to quit throwing right i'm not good anymore you know you're still yeah you're, i mean you're still fourth in the world if you if you do that so by the way yeah i might kind of just point that out right that's a testament to where your mindset is like yeah 2190 i mean jesus i might as well hang it up <laughs> it's like you know how many guys would be like i'm i can throw 2190 but obviously when you've thrown 2257 and you've been and already had accomplished what you have you might think you're on the down club. but it's also i think right probably a reflection of the, the the numbers as a whole collectively of the throw of the shot in the last four years has skyrocketed mm -hmm. i mean obviously sure. this competition was clearly the greatest competition ever that you know that's a that's an interesting point that you think you might hang it up at 2195 yeah. or something yeah i mean I would have thought it then, but definitely last year in this indoor season, this indoor season, I, you know, there was definitely a low point we had. You know, I don't know if it was like the, the come to Jesus moment, but it was an indoor meet here at Ohio State. I had two Chinese athletes that came over to work with me. It was, I was throwing, it was pretty brutal. And there was, some, there was a lot of backstory to it too, but I was at the meet, which you should never try to like coach or help somebody and compete yourself. So that was my first mistake. But like, I got beat by the guy I was supposed to be helping. Oh, wow. So, and my mom was there and my stepdad, and of course, Ashley's there and her kids are there. And, you know, it just doesn't look good. You know, it doesn't feel, obviously it doesn't feel good. We should look at what else you're, you're interested in. Maybe it's, maybe this is time to kind of move on. And like, I was hundred percent on board with that. It's probably makes sense. Like I lost a lot of the passion I had for throwing. That was just like, Hey, that's the reality too. You know, it's one thing if you start losing it, but you see the reality of that happening. You're like, all right, well, that's the writing on the wall. Let's, uh, let's see what the next step is. So for us, you know, every, everybody's going to remember that competition. I think for Ashley and I, and my parents who are, I'm glad we're in Doha because they were here in the kitchen talk. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more than just throwing to win in Doha. It was this crazy roller coaster of emotions, getting back on track and changing things and trusting each other right. to get to point and that was the big whirlwind that i think we're going to take away from that more than anything that actually happened in that meet i don't think she knew i was going to do that i think <laughs> people who know me know i'm a little bit more like calculated and that's that's not really the move